Let's talk about the new consumer credit scheme in Nigeria, shall we? I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on this and there are a number of things to talk about. So please stay with me for a few minutes as we discuss this. If you ask me to summarize what this is, it's not different from what they do in the Western world. For example, I live in the UK and let's say my car break down and I need to change my car. You know, I don't really need to have savings to be able to change my car. Even if I want, if I don't want a used one, even if I want a new one, you know, what they call tear rubber, that we usually call tear rubber in Nigeria, I can easily just get a new car as long as I have a job and I have income. I think that's the most important thing, that I have income. I don't even really need to have a job. I might just be a business person. But if I am able to prove that I have some source of income, then the auto, um, the, the company that sells car, they will be able to just give the car to me. Well, of course, it's still going to be based on they will have to assess my income, they will have to assess my outgoings. So basically my expenses, if I, after my expenses, then there is a, like a little bit of gap that they will be able to deduct that money. Um, that means, you know, they can just give the car to me. So, and overall, this is all about quality of life. So this is something that we, um, that we help, you know, improve people's quality of life. So many people will be looking at this like in Nigeria situation, like, you know, is this really going to work out? But it's better to look at it on the long run rather than to look at it. So it's almost like you are doing experiment and then you start an experiment or something. You might not really necessarily arrive at the desired result immediately. It might just take a, lo a little variety of um, you know iteration or multiple iteration before you are able to um, arrive at the answer. So, and this is the reason why it's the good start. And I'm going to actually talk about, you know, what I actually think about it overall towards the end of the video. So again, please stay with me. Okay, so what are the important things to note about this, um, you know, consumer credit union that the government is trying to set up? The first thing really has to do with the fact that it's something for people that are working, working class. So, and if you think about it, you know, you can't really, let's say, for example, you want a loan, you're not really going to just get a loan without you having some form of uh, income that is coming in that you'll be able to, and I think it's almost like a way to play safe. So which means that people that are working, that they have a job. So what I'm not sure yet is whether is this really for civil servant or is it anybody that is working? So, but the bottom line is that you know you have to have some form of income that is the first thing to note when it comes to this and how is this going to work out so there is a government agency um, called credit corporation so on this credit corporation this is the come this is a um, government agency that is going to um, you know that's going to deal with this that is going to administer it and how are they going to do it it's not really going to be that you know they just are going to be dishing out money money, uh, you know, for people. Um, so, but majority of this will come in form of almost like a loan. So for a start, so which means that, you know, people are able to, um, you know, um, you know, apply for loans and how is that going to work? So again, it's going to be a case of, you know, uh, the credit uh, corporation, which is a government agency, they will be working with central bank and they will be working with financial agencies like, you know, uh, let's say financial institution. Um, so that's the right word, financial institution, whereby, you know, we're talking about banks and all of that. So which means, um, you know, people will be able to, you know, apply for loan to be able to do things that will improve their quality of life. I'm not really sure how they are going to um, to assess, you know, what you want to use the money for. Yes, yeah, so, but again, it's still really a good way to start. Whereby, you know, they possibly have um, yes, and of course, people will have to register. So, and registration just means that you have to apply online, and when you apply to be on the um, almost like on the list of people that put themselves forward to be available, um, yes, to be able to uh, stand a chance of requesting for a loan, maybe a loan to buy a house or a loan to buy a car, 
or you know maybe there, there might be some other um, you know reasons as well where he will, because usually you don't even let's say for example even here in the UK you want to if I want to get a loan I have to say even though I might not use um, the money for what I said I want to use it for but but before I apply I have to actually specify this is what I want to use the money for I might even say. I want to use the money for holiday, but it's still something, you see one of the reasons why, you know, say dream holiday or something, uh, you see one of the reasons why as long as you have income to be able to, uh, to pay my back. And then this is all about, you know, instrumental payment as well. And I think something very important to note as well, like, you know, this is a way that, you know, they are able to um, start, um, you know, what, what in, in the Western world, like in the UK, America and other, you know, uh, advanced countries, or advanced economy, whereby they have the, those uh, credit agencies. So what this simply means that if I want to, let's say, for example, I want to go and apply for a loan in bank, you know, they have all my record and everything is there, they will be able to, they don't really need to speak to me to be able to know, you know, how many other, you know, uh, loans I do have or how many other, um, you know, credit I do have. So credit is just simply... Uh, the other way to call uh, credit is debt. So, which means that they are able to just quickly see through a central database to be able to know that will I be able to, or maybe have I borrowed money from somewhere before and I didn't pay them on time, therefore, meaning that if I want to borrow money from somebody else, they might be thinking, oh, oh, this person, we can't trust him because he borrowed money from XYZ company. He didn't return the money on time or he didn't pay on time. So which means that we're not going to fall victim of having to be chasing him around. So this might be something similar that the the, this um, sort of like credit, um, consumer credit um, uh, scheme, this might be something that is trying to achieve as well to be able to get people, um, to capture people's uh, information. So this is the way, you know, the advanced economy run, the advanced economy is run on credit. Whether you want to say that is a bad thing or is a good thing, that is another, uh, that, that is another ball game um, in terms of like, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, uh, credit based the economy is not good, capitalism is bad and all of that. But at the end of the day, when you look at it from the Nigerian point of view, so if, you know, credit-based economy is bad, debt is bad, you know, like, you know, people bad borrowing money and not able to uh, pay back and, you know, you even see situation whereby people take their life in the Western world because they have huge debt. But at the end of the day, you see how to, like anything in the world, or anything in this life is all about, you know, do you have the advantage that is better, that is higher than the disadvantage? If the advantage outweighs the disadvantage, then definitely you then conclude that it's a good thing. So because um, if it is not a good thing, the advanced economy that have a credit-based economy that, you know, people do jackpa, like, you know, people running away from Nigeria, and coming to the Western world where me included. So if it is really bad, why do we not just stay in Nigeria anyway or stay somewhere in Africa or even relocate to somewhere else in Africa where, you know, maybe life is better and then just don't, you know, buy something now and pay later. And that's one of the things as well that this is all about. So it's really the way they do it in the Western world, if I want a new TV, my TV breakdown, I don't really have to have some money savings to be able to do it. I can just go to one of the shops where they sell a TV and then I can just buy it. As long as my credit uh, reporting is good, and this is what, uh, one of the things that this is going to achieve as well, having that credit reporting. As long as my credit reporting, my credit rating is good, I can just pick up a new television and just pay instrumentally. Again, whether you think that is a good thing or a bad thing, then it's um, it, it's just the way it is. That, that's that, that's the way it is. But it doesn't really mean that you know when it's available. It doesn't mean that you have to take that. Something else to mention as well is that do you really have to pay to be able to get? on this list. I'm talking about the list to be able to consider, to be considered by the government um, for this uh, credit, uh, consumer credit um, uh, scheme. Do you really need to pay for that? You don't need to pay. I think it's free to be able to just uh, you know, get on there online. And also, of course, they do have deadline whereby you know they are going to be doing it in phases. I think they are targeting, did they say something like 50% of the working class or something like that? 
by 2030. Um, uh, I think that's really a huge number. If that is, uh, if that is uh, correct, that's really a huge number. So, but you know, getting to, uh, to be able to do it in phases as well, I think is a good thing as well. And something else I was going to say as well in terms of this is that, you know, is there going to be fraud behind it? So, because when it comes to government, especially in Nigeria settings, you know, things are getting better anyway. So, but you know, there's the element of Human being is the world away. You want to digitize things as much as possible to be able to have voice cam. But the reality is that when you digitize something and then you have to automate it or do it electronically, it's still human being that do set or even if you do <laughs> use artificial intelligence, human being is the one that still trained the machine to become the artificial intelligence. So is there going to be some fraud behind the scene, like maybe favoritism or you know, man, no man, or things like that? Well, we don't know, but um, I hope they can actually do it in a better way. And it is, for me, from a home point of view, um, I would say it's a good way to start. And then maybe subsequent government, the government currently, they are not going to be there forever. If there is continuity, then the government after that, they can actually continue um, to, uh, yeah, to, to be able to, uh, to make it better, whatever the current government have done. Um, so if there's any improvement that is needed, they can continue uh, to, to, uh, to improve. This is my thought on this. So do share your thought as well in the comment box below. And if you are seeing me for the first time, if you know what I'm about, do subscribe to my channel and share the video with anyone you think will find the video useful. Thanks for watching and God bless.